Today I'm going to learn why I have such a hard time pronouncing the names of British places. I thought supercalifragilisticexpialidocious was like one of the longest words, but it's, it's like maybe a third of the length of this one. So not too long ago, I did a video on the English counties and I did okay with finding where they were, but not so great in pronouncing the names. So I wanted to find out exactly why the pronunciations of some of these names was so different from the way they looked spelled out. Not that the United States doesn't have weird names as well that are hard to pronounce, but, but I feel like England is kind of on another level. <laughs> or Britain, I guess Britain. Britain, right? Because I heard that Wales is like on another level. Level. And a lot of you recommended this video by Jay Foreman Mapman on why British place names are so hard to pronounce. So we're gonna watch that today. But first, I've started this new segment in my videos called Comment Time. We're gonna go back to my video on the English counties. I'm gonna see what you guys had to say about that because you know that I like to look at your comments and learn from them. And if you don't want to watch this part, you don't care about it, it's boring for you, and you just want to go right to the reaction to the video click on the chapter marker for the reaction. I've got chapter markers in my videos now and just go straight there. But for the rest of you, I would like to have a comment discussion leading into the video. So let's check it out. So the first comment we have is from Martin Adams. He said, had to laugh at the pronunciations. You did really well with the locations, better than most Brits would anyway. So thanks, Martin. I appreciate that. Apologize for the pronunciations. Uh, Don't Talk To Me says, the Worcestershire sauce that you have over here is literally from Worcestershire. I literally had no idea about that. So yeah, I can say Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> But when I saw Worcestershire on a map, I had no idea how to say it. I think I, I said like Worcestershire. So yeah, I kind of feel dumb about that. I've always said Worcestershire though. Is that how you actually say it? Worcestershire? Is that right? I gather from some of your comments that the North kind of pronounces things slightly differently than the South does. So there might be some variation on it. Yeah, right below that Sky Bait says, I was so funny when you completely butchered the name three times and you said it perfectly when you said Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> I mean, at least I know where Worcestershire sauce comes from now, right? I remember really liking the uh, name East Riding of Yorkshire. And so Michaela Francis says the term riding and East Riding of Yorkshire actually originates in the old divisions of the traditional country of Yorkshire. Riding is a contraction of thriding, which is an old English for a third of Yorkshire, which was divided into three parts, west, north, and east ridings. Oh, okay. If there had been a south part, well then there would have been a four farthings or fourths. All right, I'm getting lost now. Fans of Lord of the Rings will remember that the Shire was split into farthings. I, I'm not a fan of Lord of the Rings. I'm not really into fantasy. So I never saw the Lord of the Rings movies and have no idea what a far thing is, other than it's a fourth apparently. The person you can't know says there is a British YouTuber that does bits of the UK and London and his name is Jay Foreman. Well, we're gonna get to Jay Foreman today. Uh, Kieran Byrne. I feel like I read one of your comments on my previous video, Kieran. So uh, you apparently leave really good comments. The word sheriff comes from the Shires. It was originally Shire Reeve was an official that oversaw and managed the region essentially. I did not know that the word sheriff kind of came from shires. And of course, sheriffs are all, all over the United States. Do you guys still have sheriffs in Britain? I'm not sure exactly how your law enforcement works. So, all Seth shrugs says, Fairy across the mercy was a Gary and the pacemakers from Liverpool. Henry the Eighth I am was Herman's Hermits. Yeah, I got those two mixed up. For some reason, I thought they were from the same band, but they're not. So, uh, yeah, I like both. I like both bands, actually. And I like both songs. Black Card Game says a good rule of thumb is whenever there is a place named with Chester or C I don't know C E S T E R I don't know how you're supposed to say that. Uh, imagine the C and the E are silent, so just pronounce the stir like Worcester Gloucester. Oh man, all of these like grammar things I have to learn here. Uh, Tom Blinch says the difference between the ceremonial and historical counties are the historical counties are pretty much ceremonial counties. But in 1974, new metropolitan counties were counted often out of parts of the traditional counties. Uh, okay. I might have to uh, look more into that outside of the comments. Uh, George Lund says all of the counties with Shire in the name are pronounced sure, not Shire. Yeah, sorry about that. It was actually pointed out to me that I said it correctly when I was talking about like Wilshire Boulevard or New Hampshire. I, I mean, 
Why didn't I think about New Hampshire? I didn't even realize I was do doing that, so I can't really explain it. Other than I think it was just throwing me off because it was in another country for some reason. I, I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Uh, Ingle says, Derbyshire, as I was saying it, is pronounced Derbyshire. Yeah, I would have never guessed that, just looking at it. Uh, Peter Whitney says, also the city of London is a ceremonial county. I was wondering why London was considered a county. A lot of you guys told me to watch the uh, CGP Grey's video on the city of London to kind of explain some of that. So I'm just going to have to do that at some point, although I will watch his videos at like half speed from now on because, you know, the first one was ridiculous. Morgan Edges says they're pronounced Berkshire, Derbyshire, and Hertfordshire, and... What? Herefordshire? Her Herefordshire? Is that right? Am I saying that right? I feel like that's not right. Uh, Lizzie says we have so many Shire endings because it is from Anglo-Saxon times and I believe it means town or settlement. Makes sense. Originally there was Wessex, Sussex, Essex, and Middlesex. There is a Middlesex county in um, the northeast of the US. I'm sure there's probably like an Essex, Sussex, and Wessex also. You know, we just kind of like stole all of your names. Well, by the way, if you're wondering how in the world I knew English counties, it's not because I cheated or, you know, whatever. It's because I was sick for a couple of days, like, I don't know, eight or nine months ago, and I did what people typically do when they are bored and in bed from being sick, and I learned geography. That was way before I started this YouTube channel, and I had no idea that I would actually use that knowledge. <laughs> uh, Kieran Byrne, again, you know what? You, you, got, you got good comments. You've made it twice on this video. Says that Nottinghamshire is very much has something to do with uh, Robin Hood, the legend is located there, and Sherwood Forest is a real place too, but much smaller now. I was not really sure about how much of the Robin Hood legend was made up and how much of it was actually real and there, so good to know that Nottinghamshire... Gosh. I'm still doing it, I'm sorry. So anyway, it's good to know that Nottinghamshire actually does have something to do with Robin Hood and that Sherwood Forest actually exists because I actually kind of want to see Sherwood Forest. Let's see what it looks like. But anyway, I appreciate all of you who commented on this video. You let me know kind of where you're from. And I appreciate all of your corrections as far as how to pronounce everything. I certainly no disrespect meant. I just genuinely had no idea how to say this stuff. And I feel like I still don't. I'm kind of getting an idea. But hopefully this video that we're going to watch is going to kind of set me straight on some stuff as well. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at this video. So I've heard a lot of really good things about his channel and these Matt Min videos that he does. So I've got high expectations. Let's Go ahead and take a look. British place names can be tricky to pronounce. Take this place. Looks simple. But what if we told you it was pronounced Grimmies? We'd be lying. It's Grimsby. But other places can be genuinely fiddly for foreigners. And tourists who get it wrong risk being imprisoned or killed. In today's programme, we're going to ask why British place names are so hard to pronounce. Is there an and coming? No, I'm done. Welcome to Map Men. We're the men, and here's the map. This is such British humor, rightly so. Map Men, Map Men, Map, 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 Map Men, Men. There are difficult to pronounce place names all over the world. California has Zizix, Slovenia has Ptudz, Greenland has Kekertarsuit shot. Even Welsh natives struggle with this one. And tonight we can expect to see heavy showers spreading from the west into Wales. I've seen this name before. Actually, I think some of you mentioned this in the comments on my other video. I thought supercalifragilisticexpialidocious was like one of the longest words, but it's, it's like maybe a third of the length of this one. I'm not even going to attempt that because if you thought the shires were bad, that one's just gonna be, you know, there's no point. There's no point. But deliberately hard to pronounce names invented for promotional purposes like aside, British place names cause more trouble than most because they often look straightforward but contain nonsensical phonetic traps that are impossible to predict. Yep. Try this one. Go on, say it out loud in your room from. or on your train. From. Ha 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 Wrong, it's not from. F-R-O-M-E, it should be blitheringly obvious, is pronounced froom. And if you did froom. say from, don't worry, you're in good company. Froom is officially the most mispronounced place name in Britain. And that's according to a proper survey. Excuse me, could you mispronounce froom for me? <laughs> Portsmouth. That'll do. There's nothing more fun than laughing at tourists who don't know how to say something properly simply because they're from a different country and could never reasonably be expected to have predicted a local pronunciation that contradicts the basic rules of language. So, we've created the perfect travel agent's itinerary for maximising tourist humiliation across the country. 
Starting in Bialio, Beauty. Head over to Rampisham, Ransom. Then down to Mousehole, Mousehole. Next, travel north up to Towcester, Toaster. Then a quick jaunt to Gotham, Gotham. Followed by a stop in Quernmore, Quorma. Before finishing up in Alnwick, Annick, which is near Newcastle. What? Or as the people from the city itself say, Newcastle. When will they learn? As you can hear, no letter of the English alphabet is safe from being pronounced any of dozens of different ways. Including not at all. Thankfully, there are some general rules you can stick to, and because we're nice, we'll help the un-British amongst you through a couple of basics. I have to say, English, even just as a language by itself, is horrible when it comes to pronunciation and grammar. That's one thing I like about Latin especially, is that there's, there's no unpredictable way to really say words in Latin. It's pretty much the same all the time. But with English, not the case. I remember one famous scene from the I Love Lucy show where Ricky was trying to read a bedtime story in a book and they had all of the like OU words in it and all of them were pronounced differently, even though they looked the same on paper, and it was just absolutely hilarious. It's a perfect example of just how crazy English is, especially for foreigners learning it. <laughs> he spent his time in the forest cutting down boughs from the trees. Cutting wood all day made his hands strong and round. <laughs> One day... <laughs> That's rough. <laughs> Spelled the same way as the other. O-U-G-H. That's right. That shows how little you know about the English language. Sester is pronounced stir. Leicester, Worcester, Gloucester. W at the start of the final syllable is silent. Norwich, Berwick, Southwark. E-R is pronounced R. Berkshire, okay, Clerkenwell, Highland, okay. basic. Wait, what? There are some general rules you can stick to, and because we're nice, we'll help the un-British amongst you through a couple of basics. Sester is pronounced stir. Leicester, Worcester, Gloucester. Leicester, Worcester, Gloucester. So basically just ignore the C and the E. As that comment said, the C and the E are silent. So you just kind of eliminate them from the word and you've got the correct pronunciation. Although the L-I-E is throwing me off. So is it like the uh, weird, you know, I, if I comes before C and E, it's also silent? Uh, Gloucester. W at the start of the final syllable is silent. Norwich, Berwick, Southwark. Okay, so the W is silent. Nor Norwich, Norwich, Berwick. So, wait, how did you say that? Leicester, Worcester, Gloucester. W at the start of the final syllable is silent. Norwich, Berwick, Southwark. E-R is pronounced Southwark. Berkshire, Clerkenwell, Hertfordshire. But before oh. you get too reassured, for every okay. rule in the English language, there are always exceptions, such as the Sester in... Sirencester. The W in... Sandwich. And the er uh sound in... Oh, this is disgusting. Oh, sorry, Berkhamstead. Which is in Hertfordshire. The only way to be absolutely sure of pronouncing British place names correctly is to live here long enough to learn every single one of them, one at a time. About to say sorry. that. So who were the complete anchors that invented these rules? It's time for an English lesson. To make an English language, you start with the base of Germanic Anglo-Saxon. Mix in a healthy dash of Old Norse, a huge dollop of Norman French, and just a barely detectable hint of Celtic. Trust me, it'll make all the difference. Stir it up for hundreds of years until the vowels really start to shift, and then... Oh, my God. English. Oh. Excitingly, by looking at a map of... I hope that that was not blood. I have to say, though, I really like these guys and their style. They're pretty funny, so it's a good... I, I love learning this way, you know? They make it fun. By the way, I know that wasn't real blood. In the origins of British place names, we can... English. Oh, gosh. It has influenced our language where? By plotting the origins of British place names. <laughs> this marvellous, messy, multicoloured map shows which languages different British place names belong to and is a living history of our early settlers and subsequent invaders. The oldest place names here are of Celtic origin. This is where you'll find all the place names with words like tre, loch, brin, and abba. Such as Aberystwyth, meaning the mouth, abba, of the river Istwyth, which coincidentally is exactly where we find Aberystwyth today. Celtic languages were once spoken all across the British Isles, but are now reduced to a small minority of mountain dwellers. And that's because low-lying Middle England Brits turned out to be more worse at resisting invading armies. First up were the Romans, who brought in Britain's <laughs> Latin oh influences. Like the rumba? No, like boring Latin. Mm. Anywhere that ends in Castor, Sester, Chester, or Xeta was a Roman... Did he just say boring Latin? I like Latin. No, like boring Latin. Mm. Anywhere that ends in Castor, Sester, Chester, or Xeta was a Roman fort, from the Latin word castra, meaning Roman fort. But the Romans didn't stay long, so although their naming system was long-lasting, the actual names they used weren't, which is perhaps unsurprising when we learn they used names like Castra Exploratorum and Belgic Oppidum, which were sensibly renamed Braintree. 
Next, in light pink, we have the biggest group, Germanic Anglo-Saxon. Any place containing the words Ham, Hurst, Lee, Berry, Ford, Port, Mere, Stead, Tunstow, Wick, Witch or Mere are of good old Anglo-Saxon origin and massively dominate southern England. Like Buckingham. Or a low-lying area of land belonging to an Anglo-Saxon called Bucker. Perhaps the most upheavaling thing to happen to Britain's place names was the Vikings, who swept in from Scandinavia in the 9th century, committing brutal crimes including rape, pillage and the renaming of small to medium-sized settlements. You can tell the place was named by the Vikings if it ends in Thwaite, Thorpe, Kirk or B, such as our old friend Grimsby. Named after an important Viking called Grim, famed for his infectious positive energy, Grimsby literally means Grimm's village. Really? We're all familiar with these common settlement suffixes, but what's so striking is how clearly this map of Viking place names reflects the extent of the Viking invasions. You can practically see the exact location of the Danelord dividing Viking and Anglo-Saxon England without needing to draw it on with thick red pen. Following all these invasions, Britain was littered with place names that originated in different languages and accents. But the final thing that would make its place names truly unpronounceable was time. Over hundreds of years, locals who were too busy to pronounce all the syllables in Sester reduced it to stir to save time. But they couldn't read or write, so the spelling stayed the same. And while the English language has continued to gradually evolve, our place names haven't, resulting in a language landscape littered with phonetic booby traps. But what about Froom? Which linguistic group is responsible for Britain's so-called hardest place name? And usually for a place name in England, Froom is from a surviving Celtic word, Frama, which means fair, fine or brisk, probably describing the flow of its lovely river. It's not really surprising that the oldest language in these islands is the one that's drifted the furthest from pronounceability. So don't forget to join us for the next episode of Ma- I don't know. Like, I, I feel like Froom, yeah, like, you're not gonna know it's pronounced Froom just by looking at it like that, but to me, that one's a lot easier than War- Worcester? War- oh gosh. No, 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 no. Worcestershire. That's way harder. So did Matt Men. Is that the end of your sentence? Yeah, I'm done. Okay, so there we have it. I really liked their video. I, I would like to watch more from them in the future because they have a really, really great style. I like their comedy and they're fun to watch. They just kind of keep you engaged the entire time. So I really appreciate the recommendation. And while, yeah, it was a lot of info to take in, I kind of got the gist of what they were saying. Basically, the names were influenced by a lot of the invaders, Rome, the Vikings, the Celtics, all of that stuff. Although I don't know if the Celtics were actually invaders, but see, I'm going to have to learn your history, Britain. But as they were showing the map with all the different areas and the influences, it was interesting to me how they were all like really homogenous in certain areas. But it does provide a really great example of how countries tend to get the names of places and stuff. You know, the United States is kind of the same way. Obviously, our East Coast is littered with English names because we have the English colonies here, but we also had the Spanish and the French as well over here. So we have a lot of Spanish names, especially the more west you go the more is influenced by Mexico and Spain and that stuff. And I would imagine that pretty much every country around the world has basically the same story as far as how their places got their names. It's just kind of how it works, you know? And also a really cool point about how the pronunciation changed over time, how people kind of got more lazy <laughs> with how many syllables they wanted to pronounce in a name, but the name stayed the same written down on paper. So that is why there's that discrepancy between the pronunciation and the way it looks. So Roger and I appreciate you guys watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure that you like and subscribe. Our next video is going to be getting back to the Napoleonic Wars. We've got a lot more to do in that era, so really been enjoying learning more about the history of Europe and learning about this really famous guy named Napoleon that I never really learned very much about growing up. So stay tuned for all of that. More videos on the UK coming and also on some other countries as well. We're going to be kind of expanding outside of Europe a little bit because this is a big world and I don't want to just ignore everybody else. Hope you'll be back for more and we will see you next time time.